baby. And we are free. We are here. And most importantly, we are worthy. And I could not celebrate today with a panel of women who are dope, dope, dope. I mean, dope as fuck. <laughs> we have uh, a, a, a coalition that many may not realize that are actually named Dope AF, right? So uh, this is at the core of what they do every single day. They are sisters for real. Um, and they cape very hard for Black women. So um, I want to give them the chance to um, introduce themselves and, and essentially explain, you know, how their lives intersected. Uh, let, let me give y'all a chance to do that. Let's start with you, Amber. Um, what, what led you to this group, right? And, and who are you? Um, I, I'm Amber to call your favorite diversity specialist, but I'm going to kick it to the visionary that, that got us together, which is coffee. Um, so she started us here. So coffee. Okay, what's up? Um, my name is Coffee Davis. I am the founder of the March for Black Women and Girls. Term Project is the umbrella it falls under. And um, I started this, this project back in, the Term Project started in 2006. But I got the idea for the March for Black Women and Girls, which is what brought us all together collectively. In 2018, I was noticing that there was an uprise in um, violence against Black women and girls. And I wanted to do something something to bring awareness to it because I felt like nobody else noticed. So I decided to do this march and I met um, Bernice King through a mutual friend. And we just, uh, we just, from day one, we just, we just vibed. We climbed a mountain together. We shared our um, different ideas. And one of the ideas that I shared was the March Black Women. She was the first one that jumped on board. She was like, she just owned it. She was like, you know what? I'm down, put me down. And we started meeting. And I had already met Amber through a mutual friend. Amber came to one of my classrooms to do a discussion with some of my students there. And we just, we, we vibe instantly. A lot of times they think when black women come together, it's always strife and conflict or, you know, different things like that. But we actually, without knowing, knowing each other, we just kind of jumped on board each other's mission. Carissa, I met during a, a march for Breonna Taylor or a, a memorial for Breonna Taylor. And she did her poetry. I just fell in love with it. And I knew that she had an organization and I was looking for black women that had organizations also. So. Bernice had hers going, Amber Heard had hers going. And me and Tina, we just go way back. We were we were doing theater together. We were doing um, um, my um, stage play, Freedom. I'm also a writer and I do poetry and plays and stuff like that. And she was one of the actresses in my play and she, Amber brought her along. And I was like, I already know this sister. So it was just, it was really, um, it was just serendipity. It was, um, it was just something that just happened. We came together, we naturally felt each other's vision. And I, honestly, we were all, even though I was doing the March for Black Women, everybody centered Black women in their stuff and everybody had a vision at, to some degree to doing something specifically to center Black women and girls. So it was match made in heaven. That's super, super dope. I mean, I think just very casually, right? You showcase the, the power of network, like having one to start in the first place, right? Because they pull in right. their folks, they already vetted, you know? Um, and I, I think that's super, super dope that each of you have a heart for Black women individually. I can only imagine the exponential power that it has. Super, super dope. I am Gianni Olamide, I'm your spiritual plug. Um, we heard Coffee mention Carissa. Um, in my former life, I was Reverend Carissa Rogers, um, artist, um, healer. I just really believe in um, helping us get what we need so that we can do what we need to do and get where we need to be. I run an organization called the Alternative Tribe. Um, and I, can, I call myself a community leader. Sometimes people call me the chief, but you know, it's a collective effort as far as I'm concerned. So, so yeah. thank you, Gianni. Um, I'm Amber Nicole, your favorite diversity specialist. Um, and I am just that, I'm a inclusive thought leader and i am paid to help co-create cultures of inclusivity uh around the globe so we are uh, the owners of the diversity booth and uh, it just so happens that it's a play on words because my last name is booth and uh it, it works and we do good work and i'm katina right. latrice i'm the i'm the executive director of her healing empowering ratchet and restoration our Times Square, but I have a background. I am a K-12 educator, a STEM educator at that, robotics educator at that. And I've always had a passion for um, girls that look like me, um, exploring their opportunities, exploring their gifts, their abilities. And so um, we use this space 
And when I ran into Amber, we were talking and we knew Coffee was going to do the march. And uh, she, we have something called Miss Her Magic. And I'm like, this is an opportunity to collaborate and build with Coffee as a visionary. And um, so like, this is how organically it started. Um, so our hearts are pure and our, our motives are pure. We definitely want Black girls and Black women to win at all costs. And heal. And heal. And that to me is part of the winning. Yeah. Ashay, Ashay. Bernice, what about you? All right, um, Bernice Nazare. My organization is Place for Resources, and which is a young adult uh, life skills program where uh, I'm trying to fill in the gap as young, young people are evolving into adulthood with confidence, communication, hygiene, career choices, uh, and opportunities, um, and things like that. And um, so I really appreciate this group because they, they keep exposing me to uh, needs um, that maybe I wasn't even aware of or could add to the program to address, to help to enhance these uh, young people's lives. Super dope, super, super dope. Thank you ladies, uh, sincerely for what you do individually um, and collectively. And, and, and you're all based in which state? Tell the folks. Little Rock. Oh. Little Rock. Yeah. Little Rock. Little Rock. I can't do it. I can't ever do it right. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I'm just going to put on for Arkansas. Super <laughs> dope. Super dope. Um, so yeah, and your name is, 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 powerful right it's disruptive to be very honest and i'm sure it holds symbolism um for anybody that sees it right especially when they're black women um can can one of you share where the name came from we said well it came from the fact that we said if, when we do things it was like damn you so damn dope like like if any it doesn't matter what's happening and if one person is sharing it's you're gonna hear it 20 times it like when we were you know first interacting and such and so I was like, well, we're gonna turn this into an acronym and throw it on a shirt. Like, let's do it. Um, and and so we became dope AF. Like it was it was like this collective. So we're gonna be dope. Yes. Like it, like did we just yes. become best friends? Like that fast. Like everybody. So right. And and it was like a natural conversation of like dang, like we would be astonished. Like oh, Gianna, you do that shit. Like damn, that's we dope we hung out for months. We hung out for months without knowing other job that what the other jobs were. Like, like we were, dang. Website for this, like, yeah. damn, that you dope as hell. Like, what you come up with? Like, it, was. it was like an organic conversation. It kept, yeah. we kept saying dope, like, and it was, a, it was yeah. internal, and we were like, dang, she dope as hell. She dope as fuck. So it's just that's basically where we we started, and then we started coming up. We came up with the name eventually. And then for clarification, I, there's this public thing because you know a lot of people think the AF is for as fuck. But it actually is for amazing females. Amazing females. Yes. Amazing <laughs> females. <laughs> so we're gonna carry that with us no matter what. Always. It's always it's affirmation too. You know what I'm saying? Like always at black yeah. women, we are dope, amazing females at all times. We dope as fuck at all times. Like affirm that. Divinely, us, divinely us, operating period. in purpose and excellence. That's the dope. Divinely operating in purpose and excellence. Because absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like the, the the organic way that we say it came together is one thing, but the missions and how the missions align. But it's also that spiritual aspect. Like we'll be together and we'll be in a room and someone comes. We're like, like we can feel energy shifts as a unit. We're like, oh, like we're not gonna, you know, like and it's. But we still welcome all of like right. when I say everybody is welcome. And all we're saying is we just want you to be you. That is the only requirement to be in this session. We hope. We have one coming up this Saturday. You're welcome. I mean, Sunday. You're welcome to come to the Black Girl Healing Session. You know what I'm saying? Like, we talk. We unpack things. We have... It, it's not just a safe space. It's like real spaces where you get to be ugly. You get to be unhealed. You get to be... You know what I mean? Like, all of those things. And know that nobody's running away. Everybody's going to still be there at the end of the session. Just waiting on you. So... 
that's that not. feels good i mean honestly like as y'all talk it feels good and i think that means every <laughs> everything y'all write real spaces in the chat like affirm that like you know you, you're that's hearing good. it write it down you know say it aloud real spaces um I, I think that's the power that comes from us being a collective because the things y'all are saying like feeling energy when it comes in the room we don't we don't hear that in corporate spaces it's not a priority or a, a, you know or a qualifying no, Oh, but right. we feel it in corporate spaces. Oh. We feel energy shift. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. Um, super dope, ladies. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, I have to say, and, and, and it's already been mentioned in this in this format. You know, one thing that struck me when I first met you all as a collective was that you emphasized the fact that you are black women coming together and getting along and are, you know, being real sisters. And yes, this does happen in real life, right? Um, and, that, and that stood out to me, right? And, and especially because it was at the forefront, you know, of how you portray yourselves. Can you speak to, you know, what stereotypes might exist, right? That counter the story you're telling. And, and, and if you could, you know, give a lens on why you think these stereotypes exist, uh, I think it would be great to unpack that as well. Um, any of you can start. I think that we we like to do so no, no not like that, Tina. I think that what 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 we know for a fact is that uh, a lot of our community leaders and we've seen them. I mean, regardless of of their gender identity, don't do the self work a lot of times that they're out there and they're ready to you know what I'm saying like the, to hear the beat of their own drum and be in front of the crowd. But like we genuinely are gonna come for your edges if you come in for yourself. You know what I'm saying like if you like. My, like Gianni, Gianni called me out when we were going on the way to the march. You know, what I'm saying? I said something mean about myself, and she was like, "How about you don't do that?" Like, like we want to make sure that you're not even saying mean things about yourself. We work on, we unpack stuff. So that narrative that you hear that black women don't get along—that's to me when it comes out of black women's mouths—is the internalization of misogyny. That's that's right. what I hear. I, I hear the internalization of, of misogyny noir because black women's spaces and black sisterhood is so lit. It's so lit. I, I mean, like, I can't imagine how many arguments I've had with black men about my black experience, but I don't have to argue with black women about my black experience because they understand the intersectionality of gender and race. Right. And I just, I just want to jump in there and say that it's also, it's a myth. It's not, it's untrue from, um, from as long as I've lived, I've known that uh, black women have supported me whenever I begin to create something, just like with the march when they come together. The first thing that I notice whenever I do anything is how many black women come and they say, oh, that's what we're doing now. And they pull up and they pick up and they put in the work. And it's always, when I look around, it's always a sisterhood. It's all, it always has been. But I think that sometimes, as Amber said, sometimes people um, will internalize and regurgitate these, these non-truths. But when we start speaking it, we start noticing and you open your eyes and you start seeing that the sisterhood has been there in beauty salons. It's been there um, at schools when you're struggling trying to get through grad school. It's been there when you when you have your when baby when they put that scar that blanket over at you at church. Right. <laughs> That's it's so been there. It's just that when you recognize it, you tap in. And what we've done yeah. is we've tapped in. When I look around at yeah. the march, it's not just us that's there. We're the core, but it's black women vendors. It's black women um, speakers. It's black women politicians. It's But all we're doing is pulling in people we already know that's already been supporting us and we support them. I think me and with I, my background, I grew up, I grew up, my mom was a single mom. So it was, and it was a coalition of women that worked together for them to raise their children together. And so, and it was married women and single moms. And I remember one time when we got sick, we had we had the flu. And it was like, my mom, two kids got the flu. Her married friend <laughs> had two kids that got the flu. And what ended up happening, they built a coalition of like, I'm gonna take off one day, you keep the kids. You take off the next day, you keep the kids. But that has been my community of coalition of Black women together, working together to make sure things happen. And I look at Dope AF as like, if we're entrepreneurs, and though I'm in this space, that I have a collective of women that make sure that I keep moving and that we move together and we're collectively making impact in our community and our, in our world. So um, it's just taking what I've already seen in my community and now we just upscaled it and just like, hey, but this is what we do for each other anyway. So we're doing it now as entrepreneurs. And strangely, it is my resolution. The only time that 
we don't work together is when there's some element of competition in the room, right? So when there is a shared value of creation and of building and of camaraderie and of empowerment, and that's the spirit that we're in as Black women, it we gonna always be good. The only time that I see us not operating in that vein, again, is, is when something has, has caused us to feel like either it ain't enough or I need to do this over you or in spite of you or instead of you or, you know what I'm saying? Some, divisiveness and all of that, in my opinion, is also ruled by capitalism and patriarchy, other systemic things that we've internalized in ways that don't support us, but we're not our systems to begin with. So just wanted to slide that in there. Yes. <laughs> And I, and I right. would like to say that even in this space, when you feel like when there's some insecurity happening, you have a, you have, we have a space where like, I, I'm not, that's not like, even just this past week, I was like, y'all feeling this? That's not a mirror for me. Right. And we were able to talk it out. They were able to support, but that's what this, this space is of like, I can't match our energy right now because I'm in this space. And they're like, this is your, and, you, and it was the encouragement. It was the encouragement and the pouring in too to get me back to where I needed to be in my mental space. But if this is the coalition to help me make that, you know, make that change. And so I'm just appreciative of Dope AF. We have a Google Doc with affirmations in it. Purposefully, each, each person goes in and, get, and, you know, affirms the other person. Like there are days where on bad days, that's a dope document to read, but not just about yourself. Like when you get to go read the entire document, like I get to hang out with these people. Like these people call and I'd be mad. You know, like you get, you get busy during the day. If it's a day that they got like 30 messages in the group me, and I got to go catch up. I'm mad because I know I missed some good stuff. I know I did. Like it's just, it is. And I, when Coffee was talking about the march, there are black women at this march and you're going to find the organizers of that march dropping it low at the, at the, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to be who we are at all times. And I like, I like that part of it. Like you can, we can coordinate a statewide march and still back that ass up at the same time. Uh, and just to piggyback off of what the other girl said, I know one of the challenges that I had um, was, I felt like I had to be superwoman that I had to figure it out all by myself, um, that I had to do it and I couldn't really depend I shouldn't really depend on other people to make it happen. And what this group has shown me is that um, they do come through, step up, even when I'm like, no, no, that's okay. I don't need any help. I don't need any help. They're like, yes, you do, or you still going to get it. And so I appreciate that for not having to feel, um, you know, um, guilty for asking for and receiving help. And it's helping me in other areas of my life to receive that same help. So, um, and th that's one of the stereotypes I didn't even recognize that I had until it was exposed in this group. So I appreciate them for being the group of, of friends that I never even knew that I needed. So. She said she loved us. Did y'all hear that? She I mean, said she I mean, loved us. I, I, I do. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> And that's how we be making stuff happen because we all have our individual programs and when we're just sharing what it is, people yeah. are jumping in like, well, I can help with that or you, do you need help? Or like Tina was saying, you know, how was your day or what is it that we can do to support you? And when I first started seeing that come through the thread, how, what can I do to support you? I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, this, as uh, the group is called, We Sis Different. Because we are, because we are a supportive group of people. And even if you didn't know how to do that, they teach you how to do it uh, just by their actions. And so then you can go out and carry that to the rest of the world and help other Black women um, be, be that for other Black women. So we're passing it forward, just in our actions. Black sisterhood for us is a, con a full contact sport. It is not a spectator sport. Like we, we jumping in, we we tackling, we running them off. Like it's it's we in that thing. So yeah. um, super dope. I love the diversity of all um, you know your perspectives, right, and what you pull. Because uh, obviously we are not a monolith, right? But but I hear that dope AF is a proclamation, right? It is a reminder, <laughs> right? It is a goalpost for a lot of people, right? So to, to, to unlearn some bad things and, and relearn what is true. Um, because like Coffee said, it's a myth 
that we can't come together. Um, super dope. And, and I know a lot can resonate with this, right? Like I first realized when I came into entrepreneurship to serve Black female entrepreneurs that so many people were telling me about my experience, right? They said Black women are too competitive for you to help them, right? Black women, you know, they, they, they're not ready for this type of help, right? Like they, they don't know how to ask and be aggressive like men, right? And, and that's what I initially saw. So I was combating against, combating against that. But literally today, this morning, for the first time in years, I remember myself 20 years ago as a preteen, right? And I remember how I would say to my friends, I usually don't mess with girls because mm -hmm. they had. I, I didn't even remember that until today, right? When I got to high school, I, I told girls, you know, like, you know, I keep my circle small because, you know, dudes, they're not emotional, you know? But somebody told me that, right? Over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again. So one hurt transitioned into everybody. Everybody. Right you know? Um, so I, I love what y'all are doing. It, it is so healing, right? Um, thank you so much, for real, for, for gracing the stage. So um, I know you mentioned on Sunday you have a healing circle. I just want to, you know, see what else y'all are up to, if anybody's in the Arkansas area, or even if y'all have some, you know, some virtual opportunities, like what projects are y'all, you know, excited about right now? You know, go ahead. We're working on this retreat that's happening this October around actually creating a physical safe space for our sisters to be able to come together and for us to be able to do this work in community. It's somewhere beautiful where, you know, it's going to be warm, but we'll be dropping details about that early July. So yeah. make sure y'all are following Marshall Black Women and Girls on Instagram and Facebook so that you can get that information from us. All of us have respective programs, but the March for Black Women and Girls happens every year, um, and it'll be happening again next March. It'll be our third annual, and it keeps getting bigger every year, so we're excited about that. Um, and then, you know, so we run respective programs through the year, so myself, I have a program called Girls Talk for girls 12 to 17 um, around cultural education and programming, basically helping them learn what it means to, to, to know who they are and their purpose in the world. Um, so really um, moving towards that Amos Wilson idea of culture, um, not just arts and dance, but using art and dance to address social issues, to be able to address uh, like behaviors, manners, thoughts, um, the way that we show up to spaces, the way we treat each other, the way we talk language, um, all of these things, just very self-reflective, but also you know, expanding a, their, their minds. Um, also got another workshop coming up in mid-July too called mm -hmm. Finding My Way Back to Me. Um, that's based on helping people literally do their self-work and unlearn what really is, it's a repair and reprogram, you know? So relearning, unlearning and relearning, you know, a lot of the ways that we've been taught. Uh, because all we got is what we've been given until we go out and we actually get something else for ourselves. Um, I know Tina is she she been busy running the STEM programs all summer long, okay, for the kids. Coffee well, so does the can... trauma informed yoga. Look, I'm I'm finna just start telling everybody. She started telling everybody. Apparently, everybody. apparently. Yeah, we everybody. see. Everybody. But, well, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Can you participate in that every year with with the diversity booth with Tina and I and Miss Her Magic? Miss Her Magic is an initiative that we started uh, at the one year um, memory, uh, like memory of the death of the murder of Breonna Taylor. Um, we know how much black women contribute to society, period, point blank. We drag culture and society along and then we get to where we go and nobody thinks to hand us the mic. But we know if black women just didn't say anything, which is what Miss Her Magic is. We ask all black women on March 13th every year to say nothing. And I want everybody to think about, like, if Black women globally, the chaos, people ask us questions because they don't know their job and they get paid more than us. The, the Our church ladies, our your mamas, your aunties, just nothing. I just genuinely think that the impact of that would be crazy because we are missing magic. We're missing magic when it comes to implicit bias and they're killing us in hospitals, whether there is police violence, domestic violence, like, that's why... That's why black women have to be focused on because everybody has focused on every, we focused on everybody else and now it's time to turn that inward. So every year, we also are excited that that, pro, that, that initiative was endorsed by Breonna Taylor's mother. Ms. Tamika Palmer gave her blessing before we even continued to, you know, to do that. We wanted to talk with her before we launched it in her daughter's name. So miss her magic every year. <laughs> My bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
So um, beginning in August, I'll be doing a trauma-informed yoga training, which will be, um, it's for, it's, it's all inclusive. Um, anyone can come, anyone that wants to learn to teach trauma-informed yoga. So I've been doing yoga now for four years. And one of the initiatives that I have alongside uh, literacy is also um, fitness. So I do a lot of um, fitness fitness um, activities and things like that. I do a Rasta 5K that's coming up. But um, I'm really excited about the trauma-informed yoga because not only are we going to be doing yoga and and um, adding um, the trauma-informed piece to it, but also it's the teacher training. So everyone that leaves will be equipped with being able to teach that to the community also. And that's starting in August. I'll be going to Washington, D.C. And um, I think we may be going as a group, but we're going to be going out there with Black Femicide and... Um, and doing the March of Black Women on Washington in August also. Yeah, that part. And I and I I'm in I'm in the process of right now on my on my other job that I have that I'm I'm establishing two, I mean nine STEM age programs across the state of Arkansas in like four or five in five different sites. So I'm working on that. But in the meantime, my original work, what I want to do, what I'm in the process of creating is a workshop teaching consent and boundaries, utilizing hip hop. For young girls and young boys, um, right. to we gotta they need to understand what consent is, what boundaries. We losing too many. I've lost four. I've lost about. I've lost three, two in the last two months. Black girls, black former students from intimate partner violence, and um, we gotta we gotta start teaching them about setting boundaries and knowing what consent is and when to leave when those boundaries are disrespected. And so I'm going, um, I'm in the process of creating a workshop for that as well. Put me in the game, Cody. And I'm <laughs> all hands on deck. Right. And I'm and I'm hoping Tina starts a program to um, teach other teachers uh, STEM, even virtually, uh, even like daycare centers. And um, I, and I say that because I have another friend who has a daycare, and she would love to be able to offer that to, you know, her students. And because Tina has such a unique perspective uh, or approach to this, where she uses hip hop. If y'all go on to uh, UAMS Pathways Academy on YouTube, y'all gonna see the cutest videos. They're gonna make you laugh and cry. You're gonna be celebrating these kids, and you're gonna be like, I want my kids to do that. So hopefully, um, I am really pushing it. Tina hasn't necessarily agreed to it, but um, I'm gonna try to hit, I'm gonna. I think she opened to it. Uh, but she I'm gonna volunteered to you somewhere, Tina. She volunteered. I did. I did. I did. Because Tina got to spread this magic. So that Tina, over there, Tina over there blinking like. But see, this is, and this, is what, and this is the this is what dope AF is. Because and let me be honest, I am I am a newbie in the entrepreneur field. So. Um, and hanging with these ladies pushes me uh, just a little bit further to step out, just a little bit more, create and expand a little bit more on my workshops and ideas and skills and abilities that I've been having over the years. So um, a lot of times we think we got to make an impact by ourselves, but we have a group of people that got us and you can't, I don't know, to me, I'm a, I have a collaborative spirit and I don't think you can make movements without individually, you need a group of people and Dope AF is my people. My tribe. Um, Oh, oh, we have the anthology. Don't don't forget. Oh, yeah. we, have, we got a book. Yeah. We, got a book. <laughs> we got a book. We got a book. We got a book. Dear, dear sis, I love you. It's an anthology on Black sisterhood. It is going to be the dopest, dopest book around because Dope AF is a part of it. And so many other dope Black women. And you can't go wrong. I mean, like literally Black women and art, is never. you can never go wrong there. So you'll catch us on uh, Amazon and all the places and all the things. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. I'm excited. We are we are really excited. And then Katina and I will I put out a children's book later this year called STEM Looks Like STEM Me. STEM Looks Like Me. STEM Looks Like Me. Wait, look for that video on, on the UAMS Pathways Academy uh, page on YouTube. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna be crying and dancing and laughing. So I just want y'all to know, we do have, we usually have like a weekly Zoom meeting. Uh, it's, and we, it's supposed to be a strategic, planning session where we're supposed to be executing ideas but we have to keep um extending because it turns into fun it turns into fun tina keeps us on schedule um and keep us <laughs> she keeps us because we probably wouldn't get that done <laughs> um we, then, we, we work at the first half that's true <laughs> that's true 
And I've learned recently that I have some kind of executive energy where um, I could be uh, pretty um, uh, sometimes focus driven. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that about myself. <laughs> Amber's a visionary. Gianni is again naturally the spiritual plug, and she comes and she's the community um, organizer. She's the she keeps us keeps people accountable to the goal. Keeps a of finger the, on the pulse. Yeah. On, on, yeah. yeah. And of course, um, coffee, uh, she definitely has her creative aspects um, and especially with victim services and different types of recognition for uh, women and things that we can do to honor women. So once we start adding all of our ideas or concepts into things, then that's where all those ideas came from. Y'all just heard from because it was just, it's our weekly Zoom meeting uh, where we have fun. Um, and we sometimes get uh, some of the work done too. We don't all get there at the same time. The the meeting the meeting has a start time. We don't all get there at the start time, and you know, and then we have like some of our group stays up late, and some of our group goes to bed early. And um, so trying to find a nice medium where everybody can be cognizant, it can be tough. It can be tough, but we make it. <laughs> of coalition work. I love it, ladies. Um, and yeah, I love I love what you said to Katina about, you know, there can't be individual success without collaborative success, right? Like Eleanor Roosevelt said, you know, the only thing you can do by yourself is fail. The only thing you can do by yourself is fail. Um, that's that energy. And while they throw something at you, I got something to throw at you too, Katina. Um, there is this thing that's in this five, fifth year called the Hip Hop Hackathon, and it is crazy big like this thing is about to be global i'm sure very soon 20 to 30 corporations have already like big corporates like microsoft amazon etc have already thrown a whole bunch of stuff um, in there to award high school students and and, and collegiate level um, learners with it with the sole purpose of using hip-hop right and culture to push more black people to stem because only um, I think the latest number is only 1% of us can fill jobs yeah. that are out there so uh, I'd love to plug you with uh, the rest of the board. I'm, I'm one of the board members, but you would be great to be whatever you want to be. If you want to do a workshop or be a teacher or be a mentor, um, I think you should definitely do that. It is this month. It is live right now. If you want to be a judge, you know, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll plug you to that because this, I mean, you being a part of the movement, I think is, would be huge um, all around. Super dope. Ladies. I got you. Let me know. Right, love, it. love it. Love it. Awesome. So, so there are some women, I am sure, <laughs> who are uh, thinking about collaborating, but different things are holding them back, right? It could be trauma, right? Like old experiences. I'm one of them. It was family hurt that, that had me thinking that, you know, I had to be careful around women, right? Um, some people might be afraid to be a leader, right? Like, I, I think you all talking about your different um, contributions to the group is beautiful because I think people see they don't have to be all the things, right? You, you be one critical part of the puzzle. And everyone else fills in. So I love, I love to hear your tips um, for women who are on the sidelines currently, who really, really want to to collaborate officially long term with other people. Um, what tips did you give them, uh, Katina? Let's start with you. Um, one that I that I'm learning is uh, the willingness to be vulnerable and the willingness to trust. Trust that they're gonna keep you. Trust that they're gonna. That the people you choose are going to hold you, hold you up, and they got you when you can't. That's good. That's good. I'm shy. Bernice, what about you? What are tips you would offer? Um, I have two, and I hope I'm not sending nobody, somebody else's thunder. But um, one is that we don't do group think. You know, we all have our own individual um, stances and um, personalities. Um, and I'll give an example, you know, um, the polarity of Black Lives Matter uh, or, you know, and the involvement of um, law enforcement. Um, and, you know, we had conversations about it, um, but, and before when we didn't even know each other, like the first year when we barely knew each other, I didn't know the history behind the experiences of other people. And um, obviously they didn't know mine. So we had, we learned to respect each other's uh, boundaries and the things that were important to each other. And 
we don't have to all do the same thing. Um, and if it's not your lane, it's just not your lane. But what we'll do is like, well, if that if it's that if that's important to you, then we'll support you. You know, I'll support you in that in the way that I can. So that was uh, really helpful um, for me. And uh, there's another one, but I forgot. I, I'll let you come back to me. <laughs> All good, Mama. We appreciate those gems. Super, super helpful. Coffee, what about you? What tips did you offer to Black female entrepreneurs who are, are hoping to start their own uh, coalition one day or soon? Okay, the first thing I would say is just just to do it because a lot of times um, we hold ourselves back. We um, we have a lot of reservations because we're unsure. Um, we may not have the confidence or whatever. We don't feel like, well, well, what will they think? Will they will they come? But once you build it, they will come. Once you build it, once you step out there, you're going to find that so many other people are aligned with that same cause. Um, just like I mentioned earlier with the march when I first brought it up, all I had to do was speak it into existence. It, it didn't exist yet. We didn't do it yet. The first year that I did it, I had a team. But when I first spoke it out of my mouth, it wasn't a, it was, it was a idea. It was a vision in my head. So just going, stepping forth. And once you step forth, you'll see other people say, Hey, I'm with that. Or, Hey, I want to do that too. Or I had the same idea. Um, the other thing, uh, I, I had to, what was the other one? Um, oh, know, know what your strengths are and lay on, lean into those strengths. Don't feel like, like you mentioned earlier, you don't have to know and do everything. We are a coalition. That means certain things can be delegated to whoever has the stronger understanding of that area. And it's okay. And then be willing to, to step up when it's your turn. When it's like, oh, okay, well, I know how to do that. Boom, then it's you. But just being able to, to understand the nature of, we all, we're, we're all leaders, respectively, in our own organizations. But we know when this job, this particular aspect needs to be delegated to Tina. I don't know anything about STEM. Or... This thing could, me and me and Gianni could collab on this because we're both poets. So just understanding your place, respecting your place, place valuing your place, and also valuing your, um, the other members in your coalition. That's good. That's good. That's, That's good. good. Yeah. That's poets. Okay. Okay. Love that. Uh, Gianni, uh, other poet, uh, what tips would you give Black women? Um, I would say be okay having the conversations about shared values. Um, we get along around a lot of things, but I think we get along so much also because on a on a on a foundational level, we have the same values around how to treat people, how to move, how to show up. Like, and I I, I would almost even liken it a little bit to you know like dating. Like in the same way you would a romantic person, you got to date your 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 friends, you got to date your business partners, whoever you're going to have in your life. Um and and supposed to have those hard conversations up front because sometimes there may be alignment to work together on some things because you got certain things in common or alike, but at, at the heart of it, you don't have the same value, so depending on how long you got to work together, what all you got to do, that thing going, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it can come to a head at certain points. And so a large part of that is knowing where you stand around certain things when you come in, knowing yourself well enough to know your own inclinations and proclivities and to be aware of yourself. That way you can help let your people know, you know, I, I'm really working on this right now. I ain't all the way dealt with it yet, but you know, it's in motion. I'm talking to my therapist about it or whatever the case may be, or this is a trigger for me, or, you know, this where I stand on this issue. And I heard you say such and such. And I think we just should talk about it and see how it fares, <laughs> you know? But what I can say with this group is every time we have a conversation, around different things even even sometimes it's around like working with people like you know how y'all feel about working with these people or how you feel about working with these folks what's your experience like you know being able to listen to folk and to listen deeply and intently and to hear and to be able to speak your truth unapologetically all of those things are important so i would just say have the conversations early around what's important um that way you know whether or not you know long term you'll be able to sustain things that's so good. I hope I hope y'all were writing notes on that piece because we have been taught to fake it until we make it, right? And what happens when you fake it until you make it is you are pretending, right? You are performing until it goes to autopilot, right? But, yep. but what, what Gianni is saying is put yourself in environments that are safe enough, right? For you yep. to expose who you really are, how you really are. feel. 
heritage really is, what really triggered you about that thing. So you can decide, right? Whether this will align, I don't think we do that enough because it hasn't been safe for us to do that always. We, we've learned other people's cultures to, to navigate their environments. Um, this is so good, y'all. Uh, and last but not least, Amber, on this topic, what what advice would you give to, to Black female entrepreneurs who are who are hoping to and looking to start their own coalition? Um, one, I'm under the impression that I don't have to be uh, wise if I can just quote people who are. Um, so a lot of what was said was, you know, many hands make light work. It, like we care, like we, we give a damn. And that's exhausting because it never ends. We are fighting so many fights as black women and as black as the diaspora on, on education and healthcare and economic, like you name it. By myself, it, feel, it, it feels lonely. But having this tribe with me, even if it's just the space to say, y'all, I'm exhausted. I don't have anything else in me. None of my, this tribe doesn't say, well, you got to get up and go. They were, you need to sit down and rest. Like, that's important because I feel like we've seen, we've seen martyrdom. We've seen black women kill themselves for every other cause and then not show up for themselves. Um, the, the African proverb, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Like, we're going to slow, we're going to slow down. Um, we're going to acknowledge that we're not going to get it all done in this lifetime. The pe We look up to people who didn't get it all done. So there's still going to be work to do. So it's okay to slow down because that doesn't mean that you are devaluing the work that's been done. Um, I think that there are a lot of times that we don't step out because we're afraid, right? You're afraid of being hurt. Well, that, that comes along with relationships. Even with sisterhood, sisterhood is not all bubbles and champagne and fun and laughing. And like, sometimes it's, you didn't show up for me in this way and it hurt. This is why this triggered me this way. Like, you know, I'm having that conversation and understanding that hurt don't mean hate. Like I'm mad at you today. And Katina, Katina, she, it's gonna make her so mad in the beginning. She will be so mad. And I'd be like, you ready to go eat? Like, bro, you can be mad, but like this us, we're not going nowhere. We're a unit. So you can eat and you can be mad while you eat, but we still together. You know, like it doesn't mean that you have to separate. If there is a, a goal and the goal is literally, I want to see everybody win. But I mean, if I know I win better when you next to me. So why am I not going to value and nurture and care for that relationship? Like this is, it's real stuff. So yep. that's about that for me. That's yeah. so yeah. good. That's that good. Is, that is so dang, y'all um, dope. Yeah. <laughs> y'all so dope. Y'all so dope, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it is powerful to uh witness the vulnerability in in all of your responses, right? Um, I don't take that for granted, right? Um, because our hurt is real, you know. <laughs> our hurt is <laughs> so real and, and without being prompted y'all have spoken about how you handle conflict resolution right you've spoken about how you not necessarily forgive but you just realize it ain't hate like you said right like hurt and hate i think it's so dope to put vocabulary to it right because yeah like i feel like people i love words and language is a is a, is a labor of love i think that what people confuse sometimes is transparency with vulnerability being transparent does not mean that you're being vulnerable. Being willing to share parts of yourself is just transparency. It's not vulnerability unless there is a responsibility of trust that is in that relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless if you cannot be hurt by the information, then that's not vulnerability. So I think that that is what is most important when it comes to Black women, because we are used to being, even if you are operating the divine feminine, there's a strength there. There's a necessary in order for us to make it through the day. So like, yeah, being able to say, I'm not strong today. Like that's vulnerability, you know? Yeah. And also this Juneteenth, as we, we think about like freedom, there's a there's also an accountability to our freedom that comes into this conversation, right? Because I right. really can decide to move any kind of way I want to. That but part. if I'm going to, I'm going to be conscientious about how I'm treating my brothers and my sisters and how I'm showing up and what I'm giving out and my energy and everything else I'm creating in this moment, right? How am I accountable to all of the freedom that I have to really do whatever the fuck I please? That's right. it. How, do, how am I mindful of, of y'all in, in this time, in this space too? So, you know, it's just a, a little self-check. Am I making yeah. sure that I'm not leaving stuff for my, for my sisters to carry that I should be carrying? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, those boundaries, even in the relationship, like even in the relationship, 
I, I'm not, I, I hear you, but I'm not carrying that. Like that, we say those things. Yep. I can, I can show for you and not leave with your bags. <laughs> And as we go on, and as we're talking about Juneteenth and we're talking about freedom, it's the freedom that means that's a process of unlearning that has to occur at the yeah. belief system internally that we have, that we've learned over the years. And uh, and then realizing that every all of us are on our own journey and have being respectful of that. So you can't carry my stuff because I'm feeling some type of way about my space in life right now as a single mom. I carry that. But this already is already stated to me of like, I hear you, yeah. But um, that's something that's a process that Tina has to go, well, Katina has to go through on her own and she's working. But you have this dope support system right here that's like, we're not going to let you fall. You're going to work through it, but we ain't going to let you fall. You get what I'm saying? So it's that, it's that piece. An unlearning. We're going to get free. We're going to get free about what we think about ourselves on Juneteenth. Yeah, and when you tired, put that shit down, okay? Because sometimes we be carrying shit that's not yeah. to carry, okay? And, and, and that, like, <laughs> thank you for the gifts that came from our ancestors, right? Because a lot of the stuff that we be carrying, they didn't gave us the freedom to, to be able to not have to, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about rest like it's a, 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 a and not even like rest is a luxury; it's a privilege, you know. See, and this is what happened. You got to, because there was there was a period where folk couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Be okay, see, this what happened in the business. This what happened in the business meetings too. We start on one topic. Now we're gonna do a whole end. different panel. Loud we doing a whole separate panel on liberation. That's what we I'm gonna go right. I'm about free of mind. We both have but it. it's all connected to the original question. <laughs> Yeah. It's connected to why we do it and, is. and why we are a coalition because we our intent is to, you know, by our example, to show other black women it is possible, to show black girls it is possible. And I don't want my daughter to have to unlearn um negative stereotypes that she, you know, by this example, she sees it already. So she can kind of she can move into it as as she grows older. She and, also um, has a real mom. And I've been so. quoting uh, T I've been quoting T G T D J. Um, I heard him say, uh, "You are the answer to your great 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 grandparents' prayers." And uh, ever since I heard that, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah!" Like I'm living it. I'm living it. That's true. Like the liberation, the freedoms, the choices, and things that we have. The, the, this movement right here, I can imagine. And it's sensitive to me because my name, I'm named after both of my great grandparents, um, Bernice and Nazarene were my grand grandmothers. So I take that um, very seriously. And I feel like doing the work that I'm doing and that we're doing um, individually and collectively um, is paying homage to our ancestors and to our um, offspring that we bring in the future. A legacy. Yep. Um, y'all, this was so rich, right? So, 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 so rich. Um, I know that anybody around the whole world can take something from this. Uh, Black women should live in the land of plenty. We should not have to just choose one. <laughs> Scarcity does, does not exist, right? Um, and because you all are doing the work and inspiring more people to do the work, right? Uh, we can live in the land of plenty. So, uh, just to cement these learnings, right, just to um, make it real and vulnerability uh, for people to carry these bricks along the way. I want to ask each of you this question, and if you could give um, your 60 second spill on this, um, it would be powerful, right? Since coming together in this sisterhood, what have you found the strength to put down and not pick up again as a result, right? of this sisterhood, of, of, of coming together, right? Of your shared strengths, right? What have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? Um, Katina, I want to start with you. Ooh. <laughs> um. Me too. <laughs> I'm 
Take your time. <laughs> Take your time, sister. That I um that I'm not doing this alone. Ashe. Ashe and amen. Bernice, since joining this sisterhood. What have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? Um, I would definitely have to piggyback off of Tina, um, Katina. And um, I would also say um, being over humble, like it's okay to brag on yourself, to speak up for yourself, um, to share those authentic truths about yourself and be proud of your accomplishments without being braggadocious and definitely, definitely sharing and affirming other women's, other women's um, strengths and um, their, their attributes and their gifts to the world, help reveal and support other people's gifts to the world. Um, and we do it for people quite a bit, but, and it's okay to do it for, for yourself. I, I've heard people say, I don't want to be the best kept secret. And so I'm practicing that more and more, especially uh, with this group, because they're, they're putting the words in my mouth. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so, Amber, what have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again? <clears throat> so your intersection and <laughs> sisterhood with Dope AF. <clears throat> um, the idea that uh, that my worth is only equal to my productivity. Um, I can conflate those two sometimes because of the work and or the or the accolades or you know that kind of stuff. But um, just I am enough. If I if I don't go do anything else with my business, if I just sit on my couch for the rest of my, I am enough. And and my my worth. I'm worth more than what I can produce. Absolutely. Okay, Ashe. Coffee. Uh, the 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 genius behind um, the the gathering of these women. Um, what have you gained the strength to put down and never pick up again as a result of the blossoming of this group? First of all, I don't appreciate having to do the shadow work. And um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, um, I think that I have a, you know, if I'm just going to be completely honest and vulnerable, um, that I have a contribution and a value outside of wife and mother. I'm in a, the, I guess you could say the second um, season of my life. My kids are grown. I'm empty nesting now. And just knowing that, like, I have something to contribute to this world outside of just those roles that society says this is what you're supposed to do. And after that, then what? And so, you know, I know as mothers, a lot of times we put things down and we, those are our first responsibilities. And I think that this group has given me the opportunity to look and, and decide what is, what is it that coffee wants to do? What is it that coffee enjoys outside of those other things? And um, just even not just within the work that we do, but also just personally knowing these women and being in their spaces personally, like going to Bernice's house and seeing so much of um, black womanhood and so much of her interest and in, uh, her self-love and stuff. It just inspires me to be like, okay, I don't have to define myself by what I do for other people. That's good, that's good, that's good. We'll drop a one in the chat if y'all crying now. Drop a one in the chat if y'all crying. All right, and we're gonna swerve uh, over to the lane of the preacher. The, the sister is anointed, okay? <laughs> Okay. Uh, Gianni, what have you Gianni. to put down and never pick up again as a, a result of being part of the coalition, Dope AF? I think it will be the superwoman syndrome. Mm. I don't have to be all things to all people. I don't have to carry all this by myself all the time. Sometimes all I need to say is, hey, sis, 
can you help me out or do you know anybody who or I, I, you know I don't I, I've always had a hard time trusting people to carry things with me right it, 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 in work right even, even if I'm on a team with people and everybody got a respective role and they supposed to know their parts majority of the time I'm like you, you want me to look over there when you get finished you want me to you know what I'm saying like I'm always overextending and I don't have to overextend like I can trust everybody to hold hold their stuff in their place and to 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 be able to oftentimes have a little more left over like sis you show you don't need nothing or I can still come through I can you know and that's a comfort in a world where black women don't have an opportunity to take no nothing off you know we got a gang of roles everywhere Gang of roles at home, gang of roles at work. If you go to some sort of cultural institution or a church, you know what I'm saying? You usually got several hats on there. You know, it's just always ripping and running and doing and doing and doing. And I don't have to be superwoman. And I'm so grateful because fuck the cape. I can't save nobody. You know what I'm saying? I can be with you as you save yourself. And I think that's what I appreciate most about these women is that being present with people is a... It, that's a ministry, okay? Everybody can't can't be with folk. And that's the value of this group for me is that, yeah, we can be with each other and there is power in that by itself. Um, and, and we ain't got to put on no extras and dress it up and try to make it cute for nobody. We just got to be. We got to be all that we are. And yeah, we get the freedom and the space to do that. And we deserve that. We're worthy of that. And not only do we together amongst us, but hell, we go out, out outside together and, and, and let other people know, hey, 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 sis, you're not alone over here. Tell the way to put the to put the put the put their ticket over here with us. You know what I'm over saying? Here. You know, it, just so people know you you ain't you ain't gotta have it all together. You ain't you ain't gotta do it all alone. Just just be. That's enough. Sometimes they look at us crazy when we leave in restaurants and we be yelling, bye cousins. But like we mean that genuinely. I mean, like that's the, you. You look like me. You was family until you ain't. Like that's it. I'm just saying, you know. It's like we we as family. Listen. So. Yeah. Well, everyone, black women are dope AF. We we celebrate. We honor. Um, and we look forward to to sticking along on the journey of this coalition. Uh, Thank you so, so much, Katina. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you so much, Gianni. Thank you so much, Coffee. Thank you so much, Bernice. Um, love and light for the rest of your journey. And everyone, y'all stick around. Next, we have a fireside chat called Cape and Heart for Black women, where we have our first male guest on the lineup talking about how he shows up globally <laughs> to be in the ring punching with us, because that's what we need. Y'all keep it locked. Thank you so much for showing up. Love and light to you, ladies. Same to you. Thank you for, for hosting this session.